Okay, hi everybody. These are my hands. <laughs> Just testing, testing. I have a um, my phone suspended above my drafting board, but the lighting isn't great for recording right now. You're seeing there's like some heavy shadows, but I think we can work through it. Um, so I've been receiving questions about bubble diagrams. And rightly so, they, they can be really confusing, but once you um, understand it, they can be a really easy way to get your creativity and your ideas out. So the main concern is that for those of you that live in a dorm, um, they're about 120 square feet. And so <laughs> I think they're like 10 foot three inches by 11 foot nine inches. So, um, that is a lot, you know, and we have to do a lot in these dorms. And when dorms were designed, they are, were originally designed for sleeping. Um, because historically, at large universities like Western, there's study halls and libraries, um, lots of different amenities where the campus becomes your home and your dorm is that's what dormitory means it's where you sleep um but now we have <laughs> you know the evolution of college in and of itself with laptops and computers and all the different technological advances um dorms are used for significantly much more and we have roommates and now during the pandemic we are living our entire lives <laughs> in our dorms um but you're not alone. There's there's a lot of people in the world that live in really confined spaces um, and the pandemic is affecting them also. I, um, I feel like I'm boring you without a visual. I live um, in a small house and uh, well, I do have a house. It's bigger than 100 square feet. Um, I do share an office with my partner who, you know, we're both full-time architects and designers, and then we both teach full-time. So um, as you can imagine, and as you all experience, we have video calls all the time um, that we, we have to do at the same time, or we have, have to schedule around each other. So I feel your pain. <laughs> um, so let's go through what it's like what do you need to do in your dorm? So this is, these are my tools right now. I've just laid down a piece of paper. This is trace paper, any paper works. Um, I've went, gone through and found whatever markers and pens that I have, different uh, thicknesses is what's always good in a variety of colors. No right or wrong in terms of that. It's more or less what works for you. I'm gonna use this pen just to write and brainstorm. Um, this pen is one of the required tools um, when the supply list is distributed. Um, it's definitely not expensive. It's You might already have one. <laughs> it's just a felt tip plain old black pen, um, but they're amazing when it comes to writing and drawing. So the first thing I'm gonna do, and you, you are tasked with also doing a program, which is the list of spaces. Um, so without doing you know the criteria, let's just go through these lists of spaces. Um, so first we have an, an entry and don't think about how big or small these are. An entry could be like the door where there's a hook for a coat. <laughs> um, they could be really small. They could be essentially psychological spaces. Um, so you do have an entry. Um, and then there's different bed arrangements I've seen. Um, but there is, there's two beds. So there's a bed one and a bed Two, whether those are bunk beds, so they take up one footprint or they're separated, um, you will have to indicate that separately. And then everybody has a desk one and a desk two. And again, this is assuming you are in a dorm with a roommate. And I believe everybody has a dresser. A dresser.
Okay. Um, I don't think there's kitchens or kitchenettes. Um, if there are, certainly write kitchenette. Um, I am going to write the food area because it seems like there's a designated area where maybe you have a bin of crackers or food, or maybe there's a microwave of some kind. There's a little food area. <laughs> um, you have a bathroom. Let's say bath. Um, you may have a sofa or you might have a chair. I'm just gonna write sofa in this example. Um, and then this example, I'm going to also say that you have a storage ottoman. And I'm adding a few unique items to the more generic list of things that everybody probably has. Um, just because these, these will be tailored to you and your personality and how you use your space. So in this scenario, we're going to say that you like to um, keep up with your fitness in your dorm as much as you can. So maybe you have a few, a few weights or dumbbells. Um, and maybe you like to do a little bit of yoga. So you like to have some yoga space, space to roll your mat out or to stretch. And maybe you like, um, doing Zumba or dance videos. So I'll, write, I'll just write dance because even if it's not intentionally for fitness, I think we all do that. Um, so that's where I'm going to leave the list right now. Yours might be less, it could be more. Um, you have to think about just every, take an inventory. And I know that I inventoried furniture here but if you think about it, each piece of furniture represents a different need. So there's sleeping, working, and then kind of like dressing and clothing, storage. So what we're gonna do now is think about what all of these really are. And I'm gonna use different colors. So I'm gonna just put the pen away. Let's see, we'll use this blue first. Um, so, I always use the word bio <laughs> for anything that involves our biological needs. So I'm gonna write bio and really that is, you know, the bathroom and food. And that, you know, food or drinks or whatever. When you say you need a bio break, it's bio break. It's usually go to the bathroom, get some water, take care of your hunger, <laughs> all those things. Um, I feel like bio is just a really good way of saying that. Um, and then you will have a sleeping area. I feel like that is self-explanatory. Um, you have a working area. And um, let's see, you will have fitness area. I'll just write fit. And um, you will, since we're all living in small spaces around the clock, I'm gonna say relax. So when you're existing in your dorm, but you're not sleeping or working or working out, relax, um, entertaining. Uh, I know, I think those, that's, that's forbidden now, but hypothetically, um, you would have social area, you know, maybe, maybe this is better if we just call it social, because maybe you just want to sit on the couch and oops, you know, talk to your parents even. So, um, those are the main areas that I'm picking up on these items. Um, I guess there's probably storage too. But I hope that you can see how I've taken this list and kind of compacted it into these zones, so to speak. So I'm just, and I just work in different colors. Um, each one of these could have a different color right now. Um, and we can assign them different colors. But right now for the sake of this video, I'm just going to go back to using 
black. Maybe I'm gonna move this a little to give us more space on the page. Okay. So the assignment asks for two different bubble diagrams. Um, and each bubble diagram could be a scenario of how these spaces interact with each other. It does not reflect the floor plan or the actual spatial arrangement. So think about your priorities in this. And we'll um, start with, let's say you really like to have social space. You want your dorm to primarily be this you know, open, multifunctional space where you can relax and talk on the phone. You could pop popcorn, have friends over for, and talk. Um, so let's just put, let's make the, so, the circle big because that is important. And it will be the, probably the largest area in your space. Um, and then you have these other areas of, you know, sleep and work. So, um, and both of those can be social. So we can overlap these. We can put like sleep. And this happens, you know, when maybe you're using the same furniture or you're, this is a bad example, sleepover. <laughs> but, you know, when, when we're living the way we are, sleep and social and work are all interconnected, um, which makes it hard to think about the spaces in a com compartmentalized way as this. Um, but if you're, say you like work to be separate from sleep. So on the other side, you would put work. Again, this is not how the space would actually be arranged. Um, but something that work, social, and sleep could all benefit from is probably the food, the bio space, and then um, perhaps the bath. And then I put it here because maybe you're, you get up in your sleep to use the restroom more than you do when you work, but it could go here, um, depending on what you think the bathroom is most important to be next to. What else do we have? We have fit, fitness and we have storage. So fitness and work are also kind of opposite. Um, so we're gonna just go ahead and put fitness over here. Maybe it's not a huge deal to you, but you do have some you know, weights or a yoga mat, at least you wanna have an area for it or an intended area. And this social space is probably a multi-use space that um, all of these activities end up happening in the social space a little bit. Um, and then storage. So you might have some kind of built-in storage um, in the bathroom. Maybe you have a closet over here. Um, I'm just going to put ST for storage right now. Um, maybe you have a your dresser is over here by fitness because that's where your clothes are. So I'm just gonna write storage again. Um, and then maybe you have a little cabinet or something that storage ottoman, um, kind of like in between your work and social area. So we'll just put it here. And so it's thinking about how the things that you use and the things that you do overlap with one another. So this would be one scenario. Um, I'm going to do another scenario and then we'll, well, actually let's, let's work out this scenario. So this is when you start to think about how do things relate to each other? And like I said, maybe you are a person that gets up to use the bathroom in the night. So having, I'm going to use it, I'm going to use a different one. Um, we'll say this thick, this is just a Sharpie, this thicker line, um, represents a, an important connection. So um, those are your, it's really important for your sleeping area to be by the toilet area, but maybe not so much, like maybe you don't get up in the night to eat food. <laughs> um, maybe you do, I don't know. <laughs> um, but maybe you use the side of your bed. Maybe you do want some of those workouts in bed, you know, like yoga in your bed kind of thing. But it's not like crucial because you still have some space. So you would want to come up with 
another type of arrow. So maybe it's a dash line. So we'll say, we'll just say this is important. Um, this is, um, you know, medium importance. And then we'll say this line means it's kind of important, it's desired, but it's okay if they're not related. So um, we'll just say desired. Um, so the food and bath, I feel like are really important. Um, let's say this, your only sink is in the bathroom and you need the water to make coffee or you need to wash your hands, whatever. Um, and so it's important to be by the bath. And if you're noticing these arrows are one way right now, um, I suppose maybe it could go that way. So you could take a shower and then go to bed. But when you're in the bathroom, you might not necessarily need food, but when you're in the food, you might need the bathroom. Um, and so I would say that storage for food is maybe medium important. Um, and then also maybe medium important in the bathroom because you have it in other areas, uh, but it's nice. And I'm going to put another arrow on that one. And this is, again, this is the rough draft to the bubble diagram. I want to take you through the thinking process before we go into the visual representation part. So um, storage with social, maybe you have board games, um, you know, maybe you have <laughs> entertainment things um, here. Maybe it's DVDs or something. So that's really important that you have some kind of storage in your social area. Maybe it's desired that you would have storage for your fitness items, but if they have to just exist without storage, you'll survive. Um, and maybe, okay, here's another scenario. Maybe you do nighttime yoga and you get so tired at the end that you just kind of crawl into bed. So you're probably thinking, oh, I wish I had time for that. Eventually, eventually you will. <laughs> a good, good on you if you are able to maintain more of a healthy lifestyle based on what you need. Um, I would say work and storage in this scenario would be really important um, because in our class we have a lot of tools. You know, paper. I have this actually. <laughs> I have little stickers that I put on my paper to keep it straight. Um, and then as we get into more formal drawing, oh boy, I almost lost my phone here. As we get into more formal drawing, um, we'll have more tools like rulers and triangles and scales and erasers, things like that. But right now it's not a big deal. So I'm going to leave it at that so we can move on. So that's the thinking process. Um, now we can get into the visual representation of this. And so I'm actually going to move the camera to another side of the page. I'll do it on, does that side work? I think we could make that work. Um, I'm gonna... So yeah, cause then you can still see this. Okay, great. <laughs> um, so let's do bio and food will be the blue, uh, maybe sleep will be purple. Again, this is just whatever colors I have. Um, and work, maybe that's um, a light blue. Just a blue version of that original black pen. They come in a lot of different colors if you like felt tips. And fitness is, we'll do a bright pink if it yeah, you can tell the difference between that and sleep. Um, and then relax and entertain, we can do in a green. And this is me, again, this is me just organizing my thoughts and getting getting things ready. And then storage, 
let's do a red. Actually, those are the only colors that I have. Okay, so we're gonna take this again. I should have prefaced this class by saying I have absolutely no YouTube experience. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'm learning uh, the the way of the YouTuber because I suddenly feel like one. Um, okay. So let's go. Um, I, I'm going to start with social since that is center and that's, you know, really, really important. Um, so I'm going to just uh, draw a circle and kind of color it in a little bit. Just so when you read the diagram on the page, it stands out because sometimes when things are just single lines, um, uh, they can be you know, hard to, to read. So and I'm doing this really quick. So we could do just green and I'm not gonna write the word yet maybe we'll make a key maybe we will write the words there's different ways um and so now we'll go with sleep which was purple um so we'll just kind of do like that this is a much thinner uh tip as you can see it's a fine tip it is what i have right now you'll probably want to think about what that could mean for you um, or if you could think of a pattern. So um, maybe we can do what's called a crosshatch for sleeping and then sleep could, the, anything that's in crosshatch could maybe mean it's a more private activity um, because then we'll have public spaces too, you know. So we'll say that's private. All right, I'm very cognizant of the shapes I am drawing. I have unintentionally drawn naughty things. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I probably will, but <laughs> maybe we'll try to not do it on video. <laughs> so now we'll get into um, work. Work we have as light blue. Um, and think about the size of everything too. So maybe, um, you know, in one scenario, there was a desk underneath of a bed, kind of like all built in together, in which case they might have been around the same size. Um, but maybe you have an expanded work area or a big L desk, or you really um, have made that area larger. Um, so, or maybe it's smaller than sleep. So you wanna do it to represent how big the space needs to be for you. And let's do this ambitiously. You might not, you might wish that you have a larger area than where you sleep. Um, so do it the way that you think in your heart and in your gut that the space should be designed, even though it's not laid out that way right now. So again, this is work. And so if you see, there's a little bit of shading on this side where sleep is, but there's a little bit more on this side where work is. Um, because I think work and social probably go to better, go together better than social and sleeping. Um, and this is again totally dependent on your lifestyle. I'm not gonna judge. <laughs> um, but you know, and we're thinking about ourselves right now. So it's easy in that respect because we know ourselves fairly well, but it's also really hard because we know ourselves really well. If you were talking to a new person and asking them these questions, um, it would be easier for you to process and draw this diagram for them probably than it is for you. Sometimes drawing things for you or things that you already see, are, are it's even harder. Um, so for work, since that's part social. I think some of it's pretty private too. I'm gonna just do kind of like loosen it up here. So it's, you can see that there's, it's private and it kind of dissipates into the social area where it's open. Alrighty, 
now fitness. All right, fitness. I have been able to do a dance video in a dorm room with somebody. <laughs> um, so um, we'll do it maybe kind of like fitness and being social is, is it could be something that works really well in a college um, environment. So let's overlap that a little bit more and put it kind of like that. So it's like half and half. Um, I don't think anybody would be embarrassed to, if they had somebody come over and they saw that their weights were out or had fitness paraphernalia around versus they might not want anybody to like look into their sheets. You might want to have a made bed, but it's okay to have your weights out. So I'm not going to hatch but I am just going to give it um, a little bit of shading right here. Okay. What else do we have? We have the bio, this big blue guy here. Um, so I'm actually, I have two types of blues and I think that they're fairly similar in color. One's really, really thick and one's that medium felt tip. So I think the bathroom is really important um, and it's a fairly private space. So I'm going to put it, you know, more on this side um, and I'm going to hatch it. Okay, and then you have a food area, which is definitely, it connects to where you work, it connects to the social area the most. So I'm gonna have it overlap this right here. Um, doesn't need to be hatched, but we can shade it a little bit. And this means that it just won't get lost um, you know, in the drawing, sometimes with thin lines, they can get lost. All right. What else did we have? We had storage. <laughs> okay. Um, so we have multiple types of storage. Um, we have clothing storage and over here, we put it to the left of the fitness area, but maybe you kind of want it closer to the sleep area. Um, because your clothing. So maybe you have some storage here. We'll just give it a nice thick line. Um, and then maybe you have storage here, maybe a cabinet where you keep your food, or maybe it's inside the bathroom, a medicine cabinet of some kind. Um, and then your work area um, might have a bookcase or something but you need storage even if you don't have it. And then we'll say you have a storage ottoman that you use for social, and that is where you keep your DVDs or <laughs> I just aged myself. <laughs> I'm trying to think of physical things that would take up storage. That's why I said that, yep. Yeah. Me, your virtual reality headsets <laughs> um, or what you know, whatever board games. So we can kind of put that um, maybe like here of goes with the food area and work and social okay so then when you stand back you have a you have a pattern essentially you can isolate certain colors if you uh were doing this in the computer you could essentially turn off the other colors um you could play with the layers of them but right now this is a um, bubble diagram that's coming together so I'm going to go back and revisit this black Sharpie for really important spaces. So I'm going to continue with it being just a thick black line with an arrow for sleep and bathroom. So I'm going to just do like this. And then bathroom and food or the food having access to the bathroom is important more important than the other way around, according to this example. <laughs> um, and then work, I think 
there should be some area of storage that's important just for the work stuff. But maybe this is semi-important. I'm gonna go back for semi-important. I'm just doing the um, these larger ones. So I think, I mean, I don't think the dresser is like super important to be by the sleeping area, um, like life or death situation. Oh, you know, we completely forgot entry, but that's okay because it's probably over here. We can go back in and sometimes with entry or windows or things like that, it is nice to wait um, after you've analyzed all of these spaces. This is a way of analyzing the spaces as opposed to just visually representing them. So I'm gonna go back to the thinner black marker and do the medium importance item, which was the dashed line. Um, so maybe that's what is here. This is a medium. Oh, I said dash line. Well, it's a double line now. Um, let's see. We'll say the social with the storage could be medium importance. And, um... The social with the food. You can say it can be medium importance. I know for some of you it might be high importance. <laughs> okay. Um, well, you know, we can say social and work is medium importance because you may have a group project or you may like to bounce ideas off of your friends or kind of combine a social event with a working event. Um, that is another thing, um, that's really great to do in college. So we'll just do like this. Okay, let's just call that. And then we'll do kind of the low, the lower important item in, or the desired, which was this one over here. Um, let's, we'll say it is desired to have storage in the bathroom, but... Um, it's not necessary because say you, you can store things other places. So I'm going to, just because sometimes things can be hard to see, I am actually going to make this a dotted line. Kind of like that. And you can see how it is hard to start to see some of, oops, <laughs> some of these things with darker colors. So um, use what you have, but think about how to make sure things are still visible. And desired. We'll say um, maybe the, the whole like yoga to bed is a desired thing, but it's not, you know, super important. So we'll kind of bring that over here. And, or maybe you do it in the morning, you know, the cool down yoga where you might not need a shower afterwards. Um, and that's, that's another point. So you get sweaty when you work out sometimes. Um, so maybe with fitness, having access to the bathroom is desired. Um, again, you might not even have a bathroom in your own space. And if that's the case, just eliminate it from this. Um, but I'm going to do, I'm just going to have it go through there. And with, with small spaces, you are going to have, it's going to be compact in this. We could expand this and make it much bigger. You don't have to have it super small or super touching or overlapping. Um, I'm just doing this right now to get it all on camera, but... It is nice to really separate them and then things that need to be touching, you indicate it with a connector as opposed to actually touching them. A lot, a lot of different ways. Um, I would, ooh, ooh, I would recommend uh, either doing a Google image or a Pinterest search of um, program diagrams or um, program bubble, di bubble uh, program. 
bubble diagrams. And you know what? I will, I have a Pinterest board that I started last year for this class. Um, and I will send everybody a link to it. Um, so then I can go through and also pin stuff that would be a good reference for you. Um, or I can even add examples that way. And even if you don't have a Pinterest account, you, you can still access it. It works just kind of like a Google image as well. Now let's talk about the entry. So I don't, I ran out of colors, so I'm going to do it in black. Um, but maybe I'll do it all in a different pattern. So, or the entry doesn't even need its own. Actually, that's a good point. I'm going to go back to this thick black marker and we'll say since social, the social area is the area, the defining area of the space. That's the space you want to walk into. And it also act as the transition area between work and sleep. So, um, you could have fun with your arrows if you're choosing to use arrows. You can just use your graphic drawing skills, coloring skills to communicate. It's always great. The more you can communicate without words, the better. Um, so here we go. And if you want to take it one step further, you can think about windows. Um, I know our dorm rooms, there might be only one window or it's just not ideal, but in this case, it's ambitious. <laughs> so I'm going to, again, I'm going to use the um, medium pen here. And let's say you would like a little window going out from your bed. Uh, so I'm going to just do like a, this type of thing. That's like a view out. Um, and then it, I guess it would be nice by your desk to have a view out and then potentially in the bathroom view out. If you have a balcony, um, you could do again, consider it how you would connect it. Um, if it's more or less a view out or if it's an area that you use. So this is really complicated. So now um, in this event, I would on your paper, go back and label them. So kind of like this, um, and then put the color, you know, a key where you give them all the colors and you say what they are. So then you can reference them and then also create a key for what your arrows mean. Kind of like over here, I changed the arrows a little. Um, so this is just one scenario. I, before I started filming this, I thought of other scenarios. Um, <laughs> I have a few like sample ones right here. I'm not going to go through and do a full developed one, but just so you can see how there can be different arrangements. So say that you want the work to be the defining feature in your space. You're at college, you're here to work, <laughs> not here to make friends. Um, so you might choose to have just like the work right out in the open, just put it there. That's priority. Um, the two other things uh, that you would need from your dorm would be sleep in the bathroom. Again, these are all the same programmatic spaces, um, just kind of different. So, and then again, the fit, the fitness was by the bath because maybe you need a shower, the food, and maybe the rest in the entertain space is not that important. And it's sort of in the corner, um, just kind of a chair kind of thing or, um, and then there's two sleep here because say your beds are not a single unit and they're divided. Um, so there's, there's a lot of different scenarios here. Uh, but start, just start writing the program out. Um, just start listing all your stuff, larger stuff. You don't have to write like candle, mirror. You don't have to get into that stuff. Like just the larger 
things and then separate them into zones as much as you can. And the zones don't need to be attached. For instance, the bio, we've included the bath and the food, but the bath and the food don't need to be by each other. So that blue circle could get split up and go in other places. So let's see. I'm sure you will have questions, but I am going to see you next week. So um, what I will look forward to everybody bringing is their list of spaces and um, how they have zoned them out. And then some bubble diagrams that look like this. Um, or, you know, that look more like this than like that. So, I mean, it does take a few iterations to do it. And the more every one you do, it's going to be a little bit more telling. So as you, you know, in this one, I completely forgot about the entry. And I noticed that these arrows weren't the best way to have symbols. So in this one, I remembered those and I picked up on it. And if I were to draw this again, I would probably bring the spaces further apart and maybe even reconsider the colors. Um, Blue has, there's a lot of things that go to the bathroom and blue is the darker color. So I maybe would choose a lighter color for that. Um, so really you just need two rounds of those. Same program for each, two different scenarios. Um, and again, this is not about furniture arrangement. This is about routines and lifestyles. So think about, I like to wake up, I go directly into the bathroom. Um, I grab food on my way out the door. So maybe you want to think, is the food area, you know, closer to the door? Maybe it's like more or less a coffee bar that you've set up. And then does the work area want to be by the coffee bar? Something like that. Um, not furniture arrangements, not the realistic spatial arrangements. You're not just putting down what you already have. Uh, it might end up looking like that, but... That's not the intention. And um, so that's really what I would like you guys to focus on for the date that you have. Some of you have me on Monday and Tuesday. Um, so obviously we'll be able to address your issues and you'll have a one up of getting started. Um, if you have me later in the week, keep going. Um, keep practicing um, your floor plan drawing. Um, read about line weights, read about dimensions, um, and then bring everything you have with questions. And again, um, the freehand lettering, we don't have a ton of tools to do like a really formal drafted lettering. Um, so as you can see, this is freehand lettering. My writing's not super <laughs> you know, I, I was just quickly doing this. If I were filling out the program sheet, um, then it, I would try to make it a little nicer. Um, but practice. Just start writing like this. Um, or, you know, look up lettering styles. Um, I know some people have different ways. They like to show different letters. There's a lot of different opportunities here. So, I'm going to end on that note. Thank you, everybody. And I look forward to seeing you next week.